Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Pro Acoustics Tech Talk. I'm Nathan, and today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about horns. Uh, I might say paging horns from time to time, but we're basically looking at how do horns work? Um, how do these horn speakers that you see in front of me actually function? How do they make noise? And uh, what are they used for? So stay tuned. All right, so today we're gonna to be exploring how horn speakers work and when and where you might use them. Uh, so obviously we do a lot with um, wall-mounted speakers, ceiling speakers, um, big stadium speakers, but we still also have a lot of use for more of your conventional paging horn or horn speakers. Um, so today's paging horn and announcement horn speakers are really great at providing intelligible voice um, or announcements or uh, paging, um, as well as like tone signaling, uh, you know, for emergency alerts, things like that. Um, they can be used indoor or outdoor and kind of built to run 24 seven in tough environments, anything from factories to ball fields to um, school emergency alert systems for outside areas. Um, Today's commercial horns are totally built for those applications um, while being you know, UV resistant, uh, perfectly fine to be out in the sun all the time, weatherproof, um, and also provide um, excellent frequency response, wide coverage, and high uh, decibel output. That's one of the most popular reasons to use a horn is that we need it to get really loud at a relatively low price and cover a wide area. So now we're gonna dive into how do horn speakers work? The most recognized characteristic of a horn speaker is that it, like you see here, looks like a horn. So there's some main components of the uh, horn speaker itself uh, that we're going to address. Uh, first, you kind of have the driver back here. It's the part that's actually hooked up to the wire. That's where the actual sound comes from. It's from the driver back here, which is then connected uh, to the uh, throat, um, which is basically where the driver connects to the rest of the neck. That's this long part of the horn itself. Uh, and then the neck at the end connects to the mouth or the bell, you know, the round bell shape that you see here. Uh, that's where the, uh, the horn connects to the air and where th things actually come out of, the, out of the horn into the air itself. So why are horns shaped like that? Well, horn speakers actually use kind of the, the opposite concept of how our ears work. If you think about your ear, um, you know, the sound waves come into the outer ear where it gradually gets narrower and decreases in size to where it goes all the way down into the eardrum, uh, gradually getting louder and making it easier for us to hear from a teeny tiny sound wave all of a sudden to, uh, you know, something that uh, we can perceive as sound or music. The horn speaker works exactly, exactly the opposite way. The driver, which is normally very small, inch or two inch most times, um, is uh, at the the beginning of the horn here at the throat, which then transforms the pressure produced by the, uh, by the driver um, through the horn shape and then it radiates out of the mouth. So the speaker has very high impedance versus the air, which has a super low impedance. So the flare actually kind of transforms that impedance, making a transition from the driver through the horn um, out into the air itself. So the horn doesn't actually add any additional energy. Just by the shape of it, it makes it to where that driver produces a much higher output and uh, radiates or covers a different wider pattern area. It's kind of the same basic concept of if I'm just standing here talking, my voice sounds a certain way, but if I cut my hands over my mouth, now it gets a little bit louder even though I'm not talking louder and also covers a wider area uh, further out that way and that way. So. Um, the larger the diaphragm um, on the, uh, the speaker, so the larger the driver itself, you know, the width of the driver, um, the higher output we get, the uh, more wattage it can handle, also the lower the frequency response would be, uh, the more of bass that the uh, horn itself would have. So by using this flared horn, we're able to get a wider area, more volume, and uh, actually more directivity to make sound throw exactly where we need it than we would with a more conventional woofer and tweeter type speaker. Um, horns also sometimes have different compression chambers. Um, we've got some different horns out there that may have a couple of different cells or kind of box areas that the driver passes through to be able to give wider coverages or more specialized coverages as needed. So there's a lot of different ways that horns can be built um, beyond just kind of the models that I have here. There's also kind of parabolic, conical, exponential, hyperbolic, and stepped horn patterns, 
We don't need to worry too, uh, too terribly much about those here, but the idea is that we can have kind of these all-in-one horn speakers, but we also have, you know, separate compression driver plus horn flare type speakers that we can use to kind of create what you need from being able to cover a very wide area or being able to throw sound, you know, hundreds, sometimes thousands of feet for a very large area like a fairgrounds or something like that. So what are the benefits of a horn speaker? It's uh, highly efficient, doesn't need a lot of wattage. Um, you know, many times a horn speaker tapped at a five watt or seven and a half watt setting can, can be very loud, much louder than a woofer and tweeter type situation because of the efficiency. Um, also, you don't hear the box itself. Sometimes woofers, woofer and tweeter speaker boxes can rattle with a horn. You don't generally have that. Um, also, the increased directivity by being able to focus sound where we need it. We also get less uh, distortion normally coming out of a horn, uh, meaning we don't have to worry about you know, a crossover network or um, keeping a woofer and a tweeter from overlapping necessarily, so we can sometimes get a smoother sound. And primarily, one of the major benefits is we focus in on the vocal range. Um, so not great for music normally, because a horn at the end of the day is focusing in on the voice, but it's very efficient and then able to project that voice a very long way. So uh, you normally don't want to use this type of speaker, uh, um, this type of horn, if you're looking to do you know, um, deep bass or real musical sound, but if you just need to be able to uh, announce a player's name at a ball field or uh, say, hey, kids, come inside at a school, you know, a horn's a great way to go for that. So all these benefits make horns great for paging, voice, emergencies, uh, warehouses, parking lots, public parking places, public buildings, places like that. Um, many horns like these two here can be used in 8 ohm or 70 volt applications. Um, just kind of let us know which way you need to uh, um, you know, have a horn in place if you uh, need a solution. And um, these are kind of two of our favorite flavors here. This is the Yorkville C180, the Coliseum Mini outdoor horn which is great for um, many of the applications that I mentioned, as well as the Atlas GA15T, which can be used in a 70 volt application, as well as a 25 volt system if you have one of those in your school. So uh, if you have questions about how horns work or uh, where you might need to use horn speakers, definitely feel free to reach out to us. Uh, drop us a like and a subscribe and a comment and let us know that you're watching and if we can help with anything else in your application. Once again, I'm Nathan and we'll see you next time.